So what is the muse? Why is it important for artists? And how do we find them? Let's find out. So a bit of background on the muse and the concept of it. The concept comes from Zeus's daughters who had different attributes that would help people with poetry or science and all these sorts of things. We don't need to get too much into that. But the most important quality of the muse to understand is this concept that it's something ethereal, generally. It's not something physical in the real world. It's almost like a god which is prayed to. And we even talk about invoking the muse, which a lot of artists have done throughout history. Now, some of this might come off as being kind of woo-woo or new agey. And if that's not the thing that you're really into, just think of it as a brain hack because we can build habits in our brains and in our rituals that we have every single day. And you don't even need to believe in gods or goddesses, although it, you know, it could help. Now, whether you're religious or not, it doesn't matter. You can still find the muse in your own way by just being consistent with your practice every day. And just as an athlete who goes out and let's say they play basketball, they don't just run onto the court and begin the game. They kind of warm up, don't they? They take some time to stretch, they take some time to shoot a couple hoops uh, before the game begins, and they get a little bit loose and ready for playing. Similarly, with making art, any type of art, this can apply to writing, this can apply to dance, this can apply to music, this can apply to painting, any type of art, you should acknowledge the fact that your brain is going to be engaged in a different process than your normal life. So you're not going to 7-Eleven to buy a bag of chips. You're sitting down to paint a picture. And sometimes this shift is really, really important because we expect ourselves to be able to sit down and just begin creating. So what I would suggest is the first thing that you do, this comes from Stephen Pressfield in his book, um, The Ways of Writing, I think it's called, Look up Pressfield Muse Prayer and you'll be able to find more information about it. Um, what you do is you can say a prayer to the muse. And he actually does this before every time that he writes. And he feels that it kind of changes his mind state into a state where he's more conducive to receiving and more conducive to creating. I'll get into receiving a little bit later. And this is something that we can all do. This isn't something that only a select few people have access to. This is something that everybody has access to. And I think a really important thing to think about, your body, your experience in this world is predicated upon blocks of time, right? So the, the person that you saw, who was me in the beginning of this video, is now different. We exist in different blocks of time and space. And in order to get better at something like painting or poetry or writing, we want to harness these blocks of time and we want to build them slowly, like we're building a snowball that's rolling down the hill and it slowly gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So we want to use these little blocks of time every day to slowly grow this larvae that can turn into a beautiful caterpillar, that can turn into a beautiful butterfly at the end of the day. So think of your experience in this world as sections of time uh, and your body is reacting to these sections of time and you have control of how to use these sections of time. So the most important thing, if you want to get in touch with the muse, it, you're not going to do it in one attempt. You're not going to do it in 10 attempts. You're going to need hundreds and hundreds of attempts. When I'm working with my students, I generally was working on a semester long um, course schedule. And throughout that time, I see about three or four months is a good amount of time to really see some progress if you work every single day. Uh, let me tell you a, a little life hack about dealing with teachers while we're at it. The more you give the teachers, the more they're going to give it back to you. So if you draw in your sketchbook every single day, it's going to enhance your abilities. You're gonna get better. But if you're in school, your teacher is also going to hopefully see all the work that you're putting in as well and give you more feedback as well because they see you doing the work. So when you, when you commit yourself to this daily practice, you're going to open yourself up to the world, which is what art is about. You don't want to just be making art in your studio by yourself 
never to be seen by anybody. What fun is that? It's only self-serving. You want to put your art out into the world and the way you can uh, manifest getting your art out into the world is by daily practice, day after day, week after week, year after year. So far this year, I've worked every single day, which some people might think is kind of overdoing it or overworking, but there's nothing else I would rather do. Once you start getting into these habits, they're how your day works. You get up, you drink your coffee, you maybe you have time in the morning for studio, maybe you have other jobs, of course. Not all of us can live off our artwork, but you find that section of time within your day and you start that section of time by saying a prayer or by saying some sort of invocation to the muse if you want to, or just realizing my mind is changing now that I've sat down and now that I've, I'm going to begin to create, I'm in a different state. And again, this is true for writing, this is true for dance, music, art, whatever you want to do. Make sure you understand that mind shift which occurs and tap into it. If a musician is playing, I'm not a musician, but I've heard this often, they talk about the flow where their hands are just moving and their brain is hardly even thinking about. That's not a state you can get into immediately when you sit down. You can't just sit down and begin playing immediately like you're in the flow. You need a little bit of time to warm up. You need a little time to work your brain muscles. So in order to get in contact with the muse, you have to show up for them every single day. It's like a date, right? You're trying to date somebody. You're trying to court them. You want them to be your friend. And if they're your friend, you know they're going to just shower you with all these gifts. Um, when we think of some of the greatest painters of all time, somebody like Albrecht Dürer, right? Unbelievable draftsman, unbelievable printmaker, unbelievable painter. Even he, before he began painting, claimed that he was not the one making the marks on the canvas and that all of his movements came through God. Now, whether again, again, I don't care if you believe in God or not, but look at the results that it got for him to have that faith and that belief in a God that was flowing through him and get letting him be open to the universe to, to come out onto his canvases. And like I said before, a lot of this is about being able to receive, letting yourself be open to reception. A lot of times when we paint or we get so obsessed with a, a subject like painting, we can start looking at it too analytically. We can start thinking about composition too much or line work or too much or I don't like this color combination. Forget about all that. You have to forget all about all of that stuff if you want to truly find your own style or find your own studio practice, which is sustainable. What you need to do is allow yourself to be receptive to the universe, to come into your body and spill out onto the canvas. That is what the muse is. A lot of times it's become this connotation where it's like, oh, the artist was in love with this model and she was young and beautiful. Um, in most cases, of course, because there's a whole gender thing happening with the muse in art history as well, where men are looking at beautiful women and they're like, oh, you're so beautiful, I need to paint every day. I'm not talking about that, I don't care about that. What I'm talking about is the grander, bigger idea of the muse, which is God or a goddess or spirit or the universe or whatever you want to call it, coming down, giving you some sort of knowledge, and surprising you. How many times have you made a painting or a drawing or a musical piece or a play or whatever it is and you're wondering where did this come from? Where did I get this? And I think oftentimes we can we can get so caught up in ourselves and our own egos that we think we are the ones always making it. But I would implore you to just give up a little bit of that control open yourself up and see what happens. Do it every single day, form a practice, show up and see what happens. And you're going to be able to start programming reality. You can hack the operating system of the world 
if you want to, if you engage yourself in this sort of process and really open yourself up to this right, right brain type of thinking. This isn't analytical sort of thinking. This is not logical. You know, when Miles Davis is playing a trumpet solo, he's not thinking, oh, this is A sharp, I should go here. There's no time for that. You have to do it immediately. You have to burn it into your consciousness, into your body, into your muscle memory. And you have to do it every single day. And the muse will show up and grant you some sort of gifts. Another thing which is really important is to be very clear with what it is that you want. With any sort of goal, you want to have an achievable goal in the, in the short term. You don't want to go and say, I want to be the next Michelangelo and paint the next Sistine Chapel. You start with an achievable goal that is within your reach and that you can actually get to and you can see the progress as you're going. It's like if you want to go on a diet and you say, well, I want to lose 300 pounds in two months or something like that, insane. And everyone's like, oh, well, you're setting yourself up for failure because your goal is too big. Start with small achievable goals and work through that through daily practice in order to achieve those goals. In addition to whatever it is that you want to get better at, you also should go outside of the boundaries. So if you want to become a great painter, read poetry, go study about insects, go walk down by the river and cut up some cattails and bring them home, go out to a bar at night and talk to your friends, Live in the real world, and those real world experiences will come into your artwork as well, and only enrich the entire process. It's part of just being receptive to all sorts of information. Some information you thought you wouldn't care about at all. Let yourself be receptive to it. Let yourself be open about it, and let it come into who you are, and it'll manifest itself in your art as well. As artists, we're going to encounter all sorts of things that want to distract us. They want our energy, they want our time. If it's scrolling on TikTok or, you know, watching Netflix, whatever it is, other things want your attention and want your time. When you want the muse to come into your work, you have to give them time. Let's say the muse is your partner and you're sitting on the couch together and they want to watch a movie and you're just sitting on your phone, ignoring them. At a certain point, they're gonna get fed up with you and they're gonna be like, I don't wanna hang out with you anymore. All you do is sit on your phone all day. You don't pay any attention to me. Why should I pay any attention to you? So minimize all these distractions you have in your life. Be aware that they wanna take your attention and take your attention, take your little time slots that you get for every, every single day, if it's 30 minutes, if it's an hour, if it's six hours, Take those time slots for every day and begin to cultivate the larva, which is you as an artist. Think of it as just a little larva that's just beginning to find its way around in the world. And it's going to take time and it's going to have to eat some leaves before it goes into its cocoon. But nurture it. Be receptive to things outside of your control. The most important thing, if you actually want this to work, is to trust the process. As artists, we have processes, and then we end up with products. We end up with paintings, right? They're physical things that are a documentation of our work during a certain time. If you really want this to work, you have to trust the process that if you show up, no matter what, you show up consistently in something weird is going to happen within a few months and your work is going to change. I've seen it countless times of, with my students and all of them, all of them did my daily sketchbook routine as a minimum. The best thing to do if you want to get better at painting, you paint every single day, no days off, every single day and you will want to paint. If you're a writer, this is the Stephen King model of writing books as well. You just write every single day. Yeah, maybe you need a break every once in a while. I haven't taken one yet this year, and I'm not trying to like up hustle culture or anything like this. This isn't hustle culture. This is how you get better at what you want to do. You know, 
If you want to lose weight, if you want to get big and muscular, you got to go to the gym and you got to do that consistently. You can't go to the gym for two weeks and then take off three weeks and eat chips and potatoes and fries and cheese balls, right? You have to go and be consistent about it. So if you can go three times a week, that's what you can do. That's going to be your larva growths. That's how it's going to work. The best way to do it is find a little bit of time every single day. Trust in the process. No matter what, bang it out every day, 30 minutes, one hour. And then after three or four months, you're going to start seeing tremendous changes in your work. And that's how people find their style, even though I don't like that word. That's how people find their voice, is by showing up every single day. And consistently, consistently, you'll find artists across all disciplines speaking about this practice and this process resulting in them creating things they didn't know they were had the ability to create. So where does that ability come from? Does it come from brain hacks and muscle memory? Maybe. Or maybe it comes from the muse. So thanks for watching. If you want to see my daily paintings that I've made so far this year, click the link below and uh, yeah, subscribe. Thanks a lot.